I think a lot of people take for granted water at the tap. Eighty percent of the water where the snow falls on the west slope or west of the Continental Divide in Colorado. Eighty percent of the population is on the east side of Colorado in the Front Range. So it sets up a rather interesting dichotomy in terms of where the water is. The water in the west, the population and demands in the east. And of course the population and demands in the east are growing very fast because of the attractiveness of living in and having a business in Colorado. Our water is first melt snow water, very pure. And that's illustrated by the number of microbreweries and high-tech industry that's located in Colorado where their demands for high purity of the water is extremely important. Stretching back well into history, settlers here, even from the 1800s, were looking at ways to divert water from the west slope to the east slope to supply water for mining and agriculture and later the cities. And that situation is, continues today. You're looking at rather lengthy, complex, and unfortunately expensive delivery systems to bring that water from the west to the east. Most cities are on a major river system. Uh, Colorado Springs being one of the few cities without a major river. So the old water folks from years ago came up with innovative ways to find new water supplies to supply a city that is very arid. So without a major river, our system is designed to transport water from areas where larger water supplies are to supply to an arid city. We can move 120 million gallons of water a day. The majority of the water comes from the western slope. Uh, we start taking uh, snowpack readings about January 1st to get a fairly a stable snowpack. And of course, weigh the snow in the tubes uh, every other week through the full winter period to about the 1st of April. Uh, we have actually data here from uh, I believe 25 years. And about the 1st of April, we uh, get ready to start opening the collection system, start collecting the water, uh, which generally takes place from about the 18th of April to about the 15th of August. Starting in the collection systems at Homestake Valley, small ponds and pipelines that transfer the water to uh, Homestake Reservoir. From the reservoir, uh, even though there's an outlet structure on the dam, we have a tunnel board underneath the reservoir in the center and transfers that water from Homestake Reservoir under the Continental Divide five and a half miles to Turquoise Reservoir. And from Turquoise Reservoir, uh, it follows the Mount Albert Power Plant Pipeline from there to Twin Lakes, uh, generating power for the Bureau of Reclamation. And from Twin Lakes, it's piped solidly with a 66-inch pipe to the Otero Pump Station. The Otero Pump Station boosts the water over the Mosquito Range, 750 feet of lift to the other side of Top Creek Pass, where the water gravity flows from that direction to the city of Car Springs close to 200 miles. The project was built in the mid-60s. The project's cost of $150 million uh, back in the 60s would now be about $950 million to replace this facility uh, in today's money market.